field. I mean, absolutely. There was a, a great amount of energy that came back. Um, it was kind of kind of good to see where we picked up last year, mm-hmm. essentially. I mean, we see the explosive run plays. Um, but it was just a great feeling. Then you get the crowd behind you, get a lot of energy in the stadium, and it just was uh, – it's flashbacks to old times. Do you do you guys as players do y'all do y'all look at the Cardale JT conundrum as if one guy maybe isn't hot, the other guy might be, and y'all have those options as opposed to it being a competition? How do you guys look at it? I mean, for us, it's more more or less the offense has to be efficient. Um, you know, whoever that person may be, it's all about efficiency and making sure that we utilize and score in the red zone, take care of the ball, don't turn it over, and whoever that person may be, that's that's who we want in there. What did you sense? different about JT on Saturday night? Um, his poise. I mean, that's a big-time game, big-time energy uh, with the crowd and everything. And he came in, took care of the ball, executed well, and that's, you know, something that's, that's, that's JT's leadership abilities and his, you know, qualities in himself. He's always poised, and that leadership mm-hmm. is something that's a constant with him. Was there something about his, his demeanor in particular on Saturday night or confidence or anything that you saw? Um, I mean, once we got the ball rolling, I think he really, I mean, he really got behind us and was really, you know, the energy was there. He's excited. He was confident. Um, it's just JT. Billy, you said it kind of felt like old times. Did it feel that way for the offensive line? Did you guys feel something as a group, especially in the second half? A little bit. I mean, once you really, once you start moving guys, and again, there's a lot of respect to give to Penn State. I mean, they're fantastic defense. Um, they're very, very skilled up front. But once you start moving guys and once you start really getting, gaining that momentum and that energy behind in the offense, um, you really start to see things move, and you know the offensive line really just we just get hungry and just keep going. Is there something about the zone read stuff that the offense does that fits the offensive line as well? Do you guys block those kind of plays even better than you block other stuff, or is it is it coincidental, or why is it why does that seem to fit? I mean, I wouldn't say it is. It's we block things harder just depending on what the play may be. In particular, I think it's we have a guy who makes the correct reads, and whether that be JT or Cardell, it doesn't matter. Um, but whoever executes that offense and that play particularly, that's, I mean, it, it just comes out. I mean, there's, it takes all 11 guys on the field. I mean, we're, from our skill guys making plays, our skill guys blocking to up front blocking and Zeke blocking. I mean, it takes all 11 guys and whoever makes the right read and executes, that's when things start going well for us. Do you ever get Zeke to take you guys to the steakhouse? Uh, no, no, not yet. Stats is, stats is still keeping me up on Mondays, but uh, <laughs> after uh, after a season, we'll probably get after that. He said that he felt like the running game is back to the point where it was during your final three-game stretch last year. Do you agree with that assessment? Um, yes, yes and no. I mean, we still continue have to continue to improve on execution up front. Um, but it is, you start seeing those chunk plays, those 15, 20, 25-yard plays that just keep, uh, keep the offense rolling, and that's where... Uh, Last year we had a, we had an abundance of those, and that's where it's starting to feel like old times. Were you surprised that the offensive line didn't just kind of pick up where it left off last year? That there were struggles early in the year? Um, somewhat. I mean, it's not. It's something that's just. It's 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 part of it. I mean, you're you're not gonna you're gonna have a little bit of rust. You're gonna have those kind of those moments where you have to get things behind you again. So it takes some time and. Midway through the season, we're starting to hit those strides, and that's what matters to us. Hey, Billy, what's it been like to go a few years without hearing a comparison to John Simon? Um, wow, well, that's different. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's different, but I mean, it's. I mean, John's Johnny and I are completely two different people. I mean, he's a, a spectacular defensive lineman. There's something that the categories are kind of different, so those comparisons aren't anymore since I'm not playing defense anymore. Um, but it is nice to hear those representations just from the Youngstown area itself and to kind of represent the way he did for that was Youngstown. somebody that you were constantly compared to during the mm-hmm. recruiting process, especially mm-hmm. when you were playing defensive line um, and, and coming from the same area and stuff. Is he somebody that, A, you still have a relationship with, and, and B, do you still can you still model your game after somebody who played as tough as he did? I mean, absolutely. I mean, you take you take certain qualities in defensive linemen. You want to have that relentless effort, that toughness, that nasty attitude on the offensive line, just as well. Um, still a little bit talk to his father every now and then, just because he was an old coach of mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has a relationship with my father for sure. Um, but it's it's some it's it's more of an it's an honor and a responsibility to kind of uphold those uphold that representation for you know, Mahoney County. Billy, coming from Youngstown, and obviously it's in a state. I mean, Ohio State's the in-state program, but what do you remember, you know, going back to your recruitment? Why was Ohio State the program for you, and did any other program actually have a legitimate shot at getting you? Um, well, first off, I mean, the reason why I chose Ohio State was mostly based on academic standing, uh, based on just the Fisher College business was huge for me. 
uh, and then to come to play in a prestigious program like this, itself in the football program, I mean that was that was the secondary choice, and to have Jim Trussell have that connection, and you know he originally recruited me, so it was more or less like you kind of get that kind of feel, and you know he understands what it takes, and to, get, to recruit a guy at Youngstown to have those you know qualities and and whatnot that he's looking for, it was just it's you know it's a good fit here. Trussell is Youngstown, mm -hmm. and you know to be here and all those things. I mean, did any other program have a shot? <laughs> uh, after I visited one school, it was over. So <laughs> essentially. Well, you talked about energy several times. How tough is it to refill that tank, that emotional tank, and get ready for another game, a road game? Uh, I mean, it takes a lot out of you. I mean, we're still sore. It's now Monday, and then we played Saturday. So, I mean, we're still sore from, I mean, it's a very physical, violent game. Um, but our coaches do an excellent job of taking care of us, making sure that we're replenished and, you know, feeling good for uh, Friday, so, or excuse me, Saturday. Have you, guys, have you guys taken a look at at uh, Rutgers at all? Have you seen anything of them? Or yeah, we have a little bit. Um, what was your thumbnail impression of what you've seen? I mean, they're skilled. I mean, when we played them last year, they're up front. They're skilled as well. Uh, big dudes. I mean, you got to respect them. You can't go into can't go into any game just you know take them lightly because it's college football and anybody will creep up on you. So we have the utmost respect for them, and we just have to you know go after them as as we did Penn State. Is it uh, eye opening at all? I mean, last time they played at home, they. They took Michigan State down to the wire, and you know, you, you know how good Michigan State is. Does that raise your antenna, so to speak, uh, as you go there? I mean, it doesn't raise it any more than it already is. I mean, you have to again, you have to respect every opponent. This is who you play, uh, and you can't just you can't take somebody lightly. And so it's just we have to go into that game, execute, run our offense how we do, and come in with energy and get out of there. Did you hear anything about what they did last week? Who? Rutgers. Uh, I heard they came back on Indiana. Yeah. From 25 points down? 25 points. Or 55 points. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's something that's – you have to respect your opponent. I mean, there's nothing that – well, <laughs> you got to respect the opponent. So, I mean, we're going to come in, do what we do best, and get out of there. Where do you think you guys are, like, seven games in as an offense? I mean, using both quarterbacks, you know, you're getting better to run the ball. I mean, where do you feel the whole unit is, like, as it stands now? Um – well, I I don't like that question. I don't like that question at all. Um, we're a work in progress. It's it's every game is you take steps. You have to continue to take those strides. And for us, we primarily for myself, I primarily focus. You know, I have to get better than I was last game. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the offense, it's more of a, more or less execution, as I've as I've said, and I'm staying neutral to it. It's execution. Whoever scores, I don't care who it is. I'll meet you in the end zone. We'll celebrate and call it a day. So for us, it's for the guys up front, it's take care of, you know, the guys in the back, just take care of the ball, make the right reads, make our lives easy, and we just continue to take strides. Billy, you said that you were originally recruited by Trussell, then you signed in the 13 class under Urban. What was it like? I mean, both of those guys are prestigious Ohio State coaches, but what was it like to begin the recruiting process, knowing this is your spot after one visit, through your interactions with Trussell, and then how do you compare it to maybe the way Urban cleaned it up at the end to get you? Um... Man, you're asking a lot of recruiting questions. Um, I mean, when I came when I when I came in and I, I first met Coach Russell, um, I was young. One, I was going into my sophomore year, um, and you kind of get overwhelmed at that point. So you're just like, oh my god, this place is huge. You know, the fields, you know, Nike this, Nike that, whatever. Um, and then once you start understanding the recruiting process a little bit more, you start seeing other schools. And then for me, I mean, I came, I had a tour, saw what I wanted to at the business school. You know, my grandfather really liked it, and that was a huge influence on me for that. And uh, Coach Meyer just said, hey, you want to win? I said, uh, absolutely, and I'll be your guy. And Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Hey, sign the sign National Elder of Intent, and let's go. How tough is this place for a true freshman, just that first year here, the adjustment? Extremely difficult. I mean, <laughs> y'all should write a book on how difficult it is just to, just, just getting, just, <laughs> just getting, just going through, just, just going through that adaptation. I mean, you're overwhelmed. I mean, for the, for the freak athlete like Joey Bosa, you know, God bless the kid. Um, he's a tremendous athlete, but to come in and be able to handle everything, both school, the social life aspects of it, from going from your, you know, your high school, high school student to a, you're a, you're a icon essentially in your in, in, in your community itself you're an icon you're a representation of that area so i mean it's 
right. it's wild. So for me, I mean, it took a lot. I mean, it's something that you have to handle the academics. You have to, you know, you've got goals, academic goals. You have to get into the business school. You have to understand football itself, learn the playbook, understand your coaches, and then try to manage the time, and then get out of practice at 7.30, and then, oh, you have a project due. You have two papers due, the midterm coming. Just very, very overwhelming. Um, but it essentially, once you're able to understand that and you have the people here like at Ohio State to be able to help you, it's so well worth it. And, and I would assume that you know, all these couple guys, more almost everybody here is a four or five star guy or, or at least a high three star guy, they're, they're stars. And then they come here and you are bottom of the totem pole. Mm -hmm. How hard is that adjustment to, to go from everything to nothing? Um, that's, a, that's an ego hit. I mean, again, you go from the top dude in your, your your area. I mean, you can go in any restaurant, and people are like, oh, hey, hey, so and so, you know, you you play so position for your high school, whatever. Um, it's an ego hit to go from just top dog, and that's where you know some of the freshman guys right now are kind of experiencing that. Um, but that's our job as an older guy to take those guys underneath us and say, hey, it's going to be okay. Hey, just follow your lead, dude. You're getting better. Just take a step, take a step, take a step, and get those coaches and get the confidence back in him for him to be able to take those steps. And that's something that you know, Corey Lindsay did a great job with me. And, <laughs> And you see where he's at now, so just kind of trying like to follow this stuff. So in terms of, like, it's almost like some guys have to like reach the brink where like I'm out of here, and then they either oh some yeah, do and some don't. oh yeah, you gotta you gotta contemplate quitting multiple times to really kind of go oh wow, it's actually worth it, and things you know things start getting better for you and. These things are going. So in terms of where you're at that Last freshman question. year to the sophomore year now, or regular sophomore year, I should say, you know, what's the difference level in of what you're, I mean, just mentality, preparedness, talking about getting over that hump. Like, where are you at now from where you were a year ago? Uh, confidence. Um, I mean, last year, um, I mean, Penn State embarrassed me personally, and it was a personal mission for me. I mean, those guys inside, it was kind of one of those games you, you're in, you know, Happy Valley, and it's, or, or not Happy, but yeah, we're yeah, State, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, Happy Valley, and it's like 110,000 white, the white out. It's just like, wow. Um, so to be able to go into this game, blackout, 108,000, and then just start running things, it's, it's a confidence issue, and it's that's something that, again, these young guys have to understand that and keep going with that. So that's that's the difference. In the past year, there's been a lot of people who have made position switches in the middle of their careers, even before, and like it just meant that they didn't have a spot, and then at the end, but then like when Urban came, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of people who have found success. Can you just detail the idea of making a position switch? Early in your career, and, and a how you initially took that, and b how hard it is to you know not only make that switch, but then start as a redshirt freshman. Um, I mean, the position switch was primarily was my my I wanted to do it in order, or in order for me to be able to stay here and be happy and to be successful. I had to make a change, um, so that was really the personal thing and make those changes and just find success out of it.